Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Sunday, beautiful Sunday that we have uh, here in the Northeast down into the Mid-Atlantic states. But before we get to that, I want to just talk about um, go, uh, the weather going forward in the, in the upper air, the long range, and with respect to the tropics, because you know we're going to run into this now for the next two months or so, maybe even a little bit longer than that, um, where... Uh, we're going to deal with weather models spinning up tropical storms and hurricanes and doing all sorts of things from run to run. And I just want to kind of put this out there for everybody. Uh, first off, anything that you ever see that's beyond the five-day period is speculative. And then even inside the five-day period, it's problematic because we don't really know um, the variables the longer we go out in time. Those variables, variables get wider and wider. Uh, you're going to see models spin things up. You're going to see models do different things from run to run. I know a few of you, you know, occasionally I've seen a couple of questions, you know, should I be concerned over the next two weeks? You know, that to me, um, the way I've always looked at these sorts of things is uh, you don't really get worried until you, about anything until you get inside the short range because it's, it's just a... A really a, a waste of energy. What are you going to do? Worry for two weeks? Even if I gave you the answer I, that I, you know, the, I can't give you the answer. That's just it. And no, but no one can. But I want to discuss the variables that of what we're seeing and, and put this into some sense of context here. I have up the um, GFS from the the mid the mid overnight run, which comes out at. Um, 5.30 a.m. starts to come out at 5.30 a.m. Eastern time. And, you know, one of the things that I've been saying for the last number of weeks is that we keep having this persistent uh, troughing in the eastern part of the United States. And I have made um, reference to the fact that um, when you have a, a setup like this with a trough in the east and the ridge uh, in the west, uh, it there's always that possibility that you could have the trough strengthen and uh, strengthen at a time where something winds up coming out of the tropics and it becomes a matter of timing everything um, together. You know, you could have the deepest trough in the world with the strongest southerly flow up along the east coast, but if you don't have a tropical system in um, the ideal geographic position at the time that happens, you're not going to have a threat. Uh, and you may not even have a tropical system around at all during that time. So, um, you know, you're, you're looking at a whole number of variables that have to come into uh, play uh, in order for this, for anything to happen. So this is why you can't get worked up with stuff in the long range. Now, I, I want to show you what the upper air does because right here is the reflection of last night's mid-cycle run model of a, a developing system, which it seems to want to pop up on the GFS anyway. Uh, toward the end of this coming week. Now, I want to just point out at, at, right at, right now that the Canadian has this. The um, European model, you can barely find it. So there's still a question of whether something is is or is not going to be there. And in fact, even though the last two runs of the GFS have picked up on this again, the prior three runs had nothing. So we don't even know if there's a tropical system, but I think this was the way the overnight runs played out is, is a good illustration of what to look for. Now, here we have um, the mid-cycle run, and I want you to notice that the fact that as we go into um, the week of the 17th, um, what the model does is it strengthens this trough in the eastern part of the United States. So that kind of opens up the way the model handled this. I'm not saying that this is, you know, going to be reality, but I'm uh, again, I want to show you how models do things and why they vary uh, so much uh, from run to run sometimes, especially as you get further out in time. So uh, here's this trough supposedly forecast for uh, Sunday evening, July 16th through 0Z Monday the 17th. So that opens up the all alleyway for the system to kind of get drawn northwestward across the Dominican Republic and into the Bahamas. Now, that trough pulls out, and here comes a second trough. So this, this thing pulls out. This, this thing, uh, you have another trough. You saw this strong ridge out in the west. So what the model did last night, and you know I'm not telling you anything that you can't see for yourself, is that it dropped a second trough 
in the long range, again, it just kind of picks up this system and just straddles it just offshore up the East Coast. Okay, so you can see, you, you, you can see what, here's that, here's the trough, you know, and it just kind of picked it up and, and then took it up, up the coast. Okay, so that's because uh, the model last night in the mid-cycle run timed everything out just, let's call it perfectly, for lack of a better word, because I'm not trying to make it sound like this is something I want or that any of us should want, but everything kind of timed out in a certain way to bring something up. Now, why do we not worry about this um, when, when it's like this? Because I'll, I'll, I'll show you. Now, here is the look at 6Z. Here was the look at 0Z, which is the run right before it. Totally different. Um, it times out completely differently. Completely different. Now here's your trough for the same time frame. Okay, Here is your tropical system. So it wound up taking it pretty much west-northwest. Now why did it do this? Okay, well let's take it. We'll show you. I'm going to back it up. There are two major differences in those two model runs. And we're going to start, you know, here we are at the very beginning. And there's your reflection of the tropical system. You know, you've got, you know, a, basically a westerly flow in the northeast. You still have that ridge in the west, although it's kind of flat now at this point. But here is the 0Z run, and here is the look at 60. Okay, they're not that much different. They, they, they look... They look close. All right, so now let's go forward. So here it is at 156 hours. We have this tropical system in the west, in the eastern Caribbean. And let's look at this was the run from 0Z last night. Okay, and here's the, the upper air for the same time frame. All right, they still look the same. The upper air is not that much different. Now, let's go to uh, Monday, July uh, 17th. This is the 210-hour forecast, so we're into almost day nine here. This is the 0Z look. Here is the 6Z look. Okay? I'm sorry, that's the 0Z. Yes, it's the same one. I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, here's the 6Z, and here's the 0Z. Look at the difference in the in the way the troughs are here. Okay, this is really important. The the zero Z run had a you know stretched out trough from the Great Lakes down to Louisiana, but it's relatively weak. It's 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 a trough that's going to move along, and it, there's a question because you do have a bit of a ridge here on this run that. There's a, it doesn't have the kind of weakness that the 6Z had, okay? So I'm going to show you once again. Here it is at 0Z, and here it is at 6Z. Look at the difference between how the models handle this upper trough. And this is much deeper and much further south in terms of the axis of the trough. There's a much stronger vortex in eastern Canada. So right there tells you that you're going to have two different outcomes in terms of what the models are going to show in the longer term, okay? That trough pulls out on the 6Z and a new one replaces it. And on the 0Z, that trough, it doesn't even really pull out. It just kind of stretches and part of it drops back into Texas. And here's your tropical system reflection that goes west-northwest forever and you don't have anything other than a straight, you know, westerly, northwesterly flow across the northeast. So you've gotten two extremes in terms of what the mod, what this particular model is doing. And you can get, I want you at least to get a flavor of the long range and why you can't jump on um, specific model runs. I think the, the takeaways in a, when we deal with this sort of stuff is to recognize the overall pattern. I think that's the most important thing uh, with all of this. The overall pattern suggests that, you know, there's going to be troughing in the east and ridging in the west. And we know that. That has been the signature for the last six or seven weeks. And we are going to have to just monitor the timing and position of troughs and ridges, the ridge, and 
the strengthening and, and the weakening of each one and, and how they interact with each other over time. Uh, and it's going to be different every time. So the bottom line is to get worked up over this now is silly. Um, I, you know, I will tell you that those of you who don't know me from my professional years in New York, uh, just to let you know, um, you know, I have seldom uh, f felt the need to say something out, you know, more than five or six days in advance. Um, there have just been a couple of rare times where that happened. Um, Sandy happened to be one of them, but I think that was one of those situations where, you know, models were, you know, pretty much go pretty much spot on in, in, in terms of something going to happen. And the magnitude of it was pretty obvious. But if I don't tell you to worry, if you don't hear those words coming out of my mouth, if you, then don't worry about it. Okay, at this point, there really isn't anything to worry about since we don't have anything there yet to begin with. So here's just how it looks on the surface. So this was the zero Z run, which deflected everything further west northwest. And you can see that you can follow it right along. There it is. And it winds up going west northwestward. Um, so here it is at 360 hours on the zero Z run. And here it is on the six Z run. <laughs> so, I mean, it's only about an 1800 mile difference. You know, barely a, barely a, the distance of like walking across the street. But the reason why the models are doing this is because of how they time ridges and troughs in the upper air. And you know what? You can make that argument pretty much for every single tropical system that's around. Now, I want to go to uh, the water vapor imagery because I'm noticing something this morning that uh, is pretty interesting. Uh, you have this strong upper low <clears throat> sitting in the central Atlantic. And this here is, uh, we are seeing the remnants of the tropical depression uh, that was moving across the tropical Atlantic a few days ago and degenerated into an open wave. If you ask me, looking at the signature here on the water vapor imagery, um, it does seem to look like it's trying to organize to some degree. Uh, it might be that the upper low uh, is going to, um, there, it's kind of even in terms of where it is um, um, along the same longitude. and as this gets a little bit further to the west northwest, uh, the uh, shear conditions uh, may be starting to relax a little bit. The, the strongest winds could wind up, seem to be uh, from north, the northeastern quadrant northeastward. So it could be that something is trying to form, you know, something is trying to organize uh, far enough south in a way of the strong upper air winds. At least that's what it looks to me, uh, to, it looks like to me. And when we look on the visible, um, right in there, you can almost see there's like a little bit of outflow developing uh, to the uh, east side. Uh, you can see some of the high clouds kind of stretching out, uh, streaming out to the northeast, and you know a little bit of uh, cirrus on the west side here. So I, I don't know. The Hurricane Center is not looking at this. They didn't mention anything in their outlook from uh, earlier today, uh, but uh, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Uh, the UK Met, the UK Met model a few days ago did uh, want to try to regenerate this uh, as it moved uh, westward toward the Bahamas. But let's see what happens uh, as we go through the day. If this is just a temporary thing or, uh, you know, and, and, and we're going to see it just kind of, you know, weaken as the day goes on. Or is it going to, uh, is this upper low, which is still pretty much stationary, you know, is, is, is this thing going to get a little bit further to the west and start to get into a more relaxed uh, wind shear environment, which might make it a little more favorable for it to organize. So I, I, I just wanted to kind of give you a little lesson here on the tropics in terms of what's going on. As far as uh, the regular weather is concerned, it's very beautiful here in the Northeast. You can see all the dry air covering much of New England down into the mid-Atlantic states. We have another weather front <clears throat> that's going to be coming through later Tuesday and Tuesday night. So we're just pretty much in the same pattern here with uh, front after front uh, going by. And we'll give a quick look at the short range here and uh, show you. Let me just set this up where you can see it better. Put me over here. And let it load up. Okay. So, you know, here's our nice dry air mass. Now, we're going to start to um, bring, I think we may bring in some clouds later on, uh, later on Monday. But on Tuesday, we've got this weather front uh, that <clears throat> will be approaching 
uh, right about, let me put it, this is for Tuesday evening. So we've got a, a weather front right in here. Uh, that's going to be moving through. Uh, there, the shot of, of, of dry air behind it is minimal. Uh, so I don't expect it to be that much cooler or that much less humid because we already have the next um, warm front, cold front here uh, moving across the uh, Great Lakes uh, for uh, the end of the week. And you can see it there. So that's already uh, coming into the picture. And that's going to probably bring in an increasing chance for showers and, and thunderstorms um, along about later Thursday and Friday before we go into what might be another nice weekend um, weekend coming up. All right, folks, so let's leave it at that. Um, we'll, uh, I hope you've been, I've been trying to work out these live streams, so I'm going to be doing them um, from time to time. And I think I, uh, the way I'm going to work those is I'm going to be a little more short range oriented because uh, I'm limited in what I can do. Uh, um, I, I like the taped versions because uh, it gets me to, you know, really get into uh, some of the maps and to draw things. But uh, we'll uh, be doing kind of a mix of both. Um, if you have any suggestions or criticisms or questions, uh, by all means, let me know. Um, uh, they, they, they're very helpful to me um, to, to hear what your opinions are. So please do leave your comments. And um, thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Uh, it's been a joy and will continue to be a joy because you get new videos every day. And now you get notified whenever I do something live. All right, folks, have a great rest of your Sunday and we'll talk to you later.